Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so grab yours and let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 75. Welcome, welcome. I've got my cup of tea here. What do you have? I have a a Harney and Sons Paris blend. I am not normally a flavored tea person, but this is particularly good and it reminds me of my daughter. And so I thought I would restock my supply of it. Let me tell you what it's got in it. Black tea, oolong tea, vanilla flavor, black currant flavor, bergamot oil, and caramel flavor. It's quite yummy. So I want to start restocking some Uh, more of a variety of teas again I've kind of settled in on my um, you know English breakfast or Earl Grey but it's always fun to have some some fun tea in there so I hope you've got some sort of fun beverage with you well here we are it is um, the middle of September and this is going to be a hard episode a little bit this intro part because um, we dropped my youngest off at college yesterday So we are officially empty nesters and man, it's hard. (laughs) The feelings are raw and tender right now. I will be honest with you. Um, It all went well. Um, He is going to UC San Diego and my two older kids actually are both living in San Diego. One is working a full-time job and the other one will be finishing up his last quarter um, at UC San Diego. And so it is like such an enormous blessing that they are all in the same place. Like we never saw that coming. (laughs) So, and it was really fun um, as we were able to move Ben in um, and then let him get settled and he had to do his orientation and we were able to take the older two kids out to dinner and help them. They share an apartment. We helped with some, a few little things around their apartment. Um, they had bought some, some stools for this little breakfast bar, you know, like on, um, Facebook marketplace or Craigslist or something and put them in the car and brought them back and realized that they're really too tall. So it made the little breakfast bar kind of unusable to sit at those stools. So we brought a saw and we cut almost five inches off the legs of those stools. So now they can use them. So that was kind of fun. And, and then um, we spent the night and the next day we um, all went out to lunch and walked around Del Mar, which is this the, uh, that's a bucket list place to, to buy a house someday, which is never going to happen. Beautiful coastal beach town, um, had a great time walking along the beach. We watched sea lions and seals. I mean, it was just, it was really nice. Um, and then we did what we always do is walk um been around campus so that to, you know like find all his classes as much for him so that he knows where he's going as for me so that when he says you know I had um, you know calculus today <laughs> I can picture where he's at and what was kind of an unexpected um, bonus here is that you know both these kids my, my older kids are either going to or have gone to UC San Diego so they wanted to go around and look at all his classes too so they it was a much more direct path when they knew where they were going but that was just like a fun family thing and um yeah and said goodbye and cried my eyes out and <laughs> had a, a long drive home with my husband and it's funny we stopped for dinner and said you know what we can really take our time here because there's nothing at home. <laughs> We've always, you know, for 23 years there's either been a kid waiting for us to get home or a dog or in the, all the animals and the kids are, have moved on. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a strange feeling. It was a weird feeling to see that empty bed when I got up this morning by his room. So, yeah, still a little bit raw. But I am podcasting from a different room now. I'm in my daughter's room. And, um, yeah, I've got a pretty good setup in here. This is the room that I thought was going to be my sewing room after Ben went away to college. And um, to be honest with you, and we bought this great Ikea desk that I'm sitting at, and I love the desk. I'm not sure this is the right place for my sewing room, to be perfectly honest with you. I want to keep a bed in here. I have a a, a white iron day bed in here that was my high school graduation present. So we've had it for all these years. It was my daughter's bed until she moved out and, you know, eventually got a a double bed. So it's, you know, like going to be, well, for one 
they, they can, you know, the kids come home or guest room or whatever. So I want to keep the bed in here and there's still a dresser in here and now a desk. And I realized, you know, there's not like really a good place to, there's no cutting table. There's not a good place really, I guess I could figure out a place for the iron, but I don't know. I, I'm really now after we bought this desk thinking maybe the right place is just to, to stay in the dining room where I have you know, a big dining room, what, you know, is our dining room table, not our kitchen table, we eat up, but our, you know, dining room table, um, that's got my sewing machine and my cutting board, my cutting mat, and I've got plenty of space for my design wall, um, and some bookshelves that have my stash. So yeah, I'm not sure, but at least I can set, I can leave my podcast stuff set up here. So that'll be kind of nice. And I hope the sound, sound is okay. So yeah, coming at you from a new room. Before we head into the quilting segment, I'd like to thank the Fat Quarter Shop for being a sponsor of the show. The Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies. Enjoy an eternal spring with Vanetta Gertson of Lella Boutique and her latest book, Rose and Bloom, Block of the Month. With 10 enchanting quilt blocks arranged in a floral-inspired setting, this quilt is is a veritable garden of wonder. The book will be available October 2021, which is coming up, but you can still pre-order your book today and there are kits available. I will put a link in the show notes. All right, let's talk some quilting. When last we met, I was working on this modern log cabin quilt called Cabin Valley and it has been so much fun to sew and it came together like incredibly quickly. Like if I had just really sewn on it every day, I would have been done in a week. I was just like shocked at how, how it came together. And probably right after my last podcast, I started putting in the, the sashing between the blocks and then, you know, between the rows, which is all a little weird because it's on point. Um, and I mean, I was just cruising on it going so fast. And then I cut one board, like the last border, which may be the longest one, I cut it wrong and it came up short. Um, and so it took me a long time to unpick that. And then it was like time to make dinner. <laughs> and so I set it aside and that was like, I don't know, two weeks ago. And every time I look at it, I'm just like, I'm not sure what went wrong with it. What went wrong with that border? I, I, I don't want to make the same mistake again. I just need to measure it. It's just dumb. But it just goes to show you, I was bragging, not bragging, but it, I was sharing with you last podcast about how, um, I kind of got my quilting mojo back by having an easy, fun pattern that I really enjoyed. And it was so perfect for that. And I just was like, so relieved every time I sat down, like, you know what? I remember this. I love to sew, which I had kind of forgotten. And then one little stumble <laughs> on that border and it kind of got set aside. So anyways, it is actually my goal tonight to, um, to do that last border. In the meantime, I did order backing fabric. And what I decided on was um, Blossom from Riley Blake. All the solids were Riley Blake and they're beautiful colors. Just, you know, various shades of pinks and corals and blues and a mustard yellow. I just absolutely love the, the, uh, the ombre gradient that the, and I just use the colors that the, the designer I laid out and that link has been in my show notes for the like the last three episodes and I'll just leave it in there with a the picture so if you don't know what I'm talking about click on over there and check it out because it's a great quilt and I just I can't wait to see it all together so I couldn't quite I had a hard time deciding um, on the color what I picked was I think it's called bleached denim it's a very light blue and the blossom fabric is such a great backing fabric because it it's got this irregular dot pattern and and it's called blossom is because it's like a little group of about like three or four dots together which form this very or you know suggestion of a flower is all it really is christopher thompson the, the tattooed quilter designed this and it's just it's in a lot of their sort of basics colors and i've used it as a quilt back before i think what i used was called denim and this is called light denim at the front of the quilt there's a lot of background there's a lot of white so i wanted to keep the the, the backside light it doesn't match any particular blue in the front but it certainly coordinates just fine so that's going to be such a treat for me to not have to sew a seam in my um, quilt back that I have never done that before and except for like maybe a baby quilt um, 
which is which was less than the width of fabric. So that will be fun. Um, yeah, and then I will send that honestly <laughs> off to be long armed. Here's a pattern, a long arm quilting pattern that I have been wanting to use for a while, and I've just never. I don't know. I want to say never been brave enough to pick it. I don't know why I would have to be brave, but it's the, the Baptist fan pattern. And the last quilt that I sent to Deanna Senzano um, to quilt, she suggested it. She actually had what was called like a, I, something kind of like a wonky Baptist fan. I've tried to hand quilt the Baptist fan motif a few times and I, I, I pulled it out every time I've tried it. I don't know what my problem is with that, but so that is the motif I'm thinking about for that, which is frankly a little denser quilting than I usually like, but I'm going to try it. You know, you know, at this point in my quilting <laughs> journey, I need to try some things that I don't normally do. So um, I'm going to use that. Uh, I think I'm going to use that quilting design. And the other thing when I was, um, ordering the backing fabric, I hadn't yet decided on binding. Those are often two things that I wait until the quilt top is done and see what kind of speaks to me. And I'm looking and um, blue would be a very normal color for me to pick. <laughs> I love blue. Um, and I think I would pick that over a pink just because pink seems, I mean, it's kind of a feminine quilt, so I don't know who I'm kidding here. But ultimately, I think I might do white. And then, you know, like with modern quilts, this would be, you know, this isn't like super modern, but it is, it's a modern log cabin. A lot of times quilts are faced, so there is no binding. And, um, I mean, I guess I could do that. I just now thought of that. Um, but in reality, um, I just, I, I was looking through some examples online and I thought, oh, you know, what? I'm going to try white. Now I've always kind of wondered if white would get dirty or whatever, but you know what? I'm using quilts. I'm spilling coffee on quilts all the time. You know, if it gets dirty, I'll wash it. There, I mean, for me, quilts are to be used. Um, interestingly, not on beds. <laughs> I don't make quilts for beds very often. I my go-to, you know, quilt is a throw size quilt, and they're just they're piled up on beds to take naps or in family rooms and on sofas and things like that. But um, I actually like simpler bed things. You know, quilts at the foot of the bed, which is what my son in his um, dorm room we got him just some plain navy it's a comforter but then that rooftop wonders quilt is at the foot of his bed and it looks so nice so that's kind of what what I like so anyway so those two new things um for me this this pattern the quilting motif and then um using white if you have ever used white as your binding let me know um, in the comments or however you want to contact me instagram dm or email me or whatever but i would or in the simple handmade everyday facebook group i would love to hear from you there you can comment in the comments of this show i usually post the show in there and just you know comment on anything about the this episode you'd like to i'd love i love it when people do that speaking of simple handmade everyday facebook group um i had asked for questions if anybody had any questions they wanted me to answer during the podcast and I'm going to do that at the end of this podcast so that if you're not interested you can just bail out of that so so that was that's the only thing going on quilty wise um and I think my next quilt I keep saying this but it's I think it's going to be a scrap quilt um using my stash which was actually one of the questions that comes up about scraps and stash so I'll address that later but well spoiler it'll be from my stash <laughs> but it'll look like a scrap quilt does that make sense um knitting wise I'm still working on the elementary wrap from Pearl Soho this is a very simple large wrap that a bunch of us are knitting and I invite you if you are even a brand new knitter want to learn how to knit or an experienced knitter join up um we've been kind of staying in touch in the Facebook group um, Frances Dow over at the Off Kilter Quilt and Quilt Fiction podcast. Um, she is the one that got this whole thing started by telling me she was going <laughs> to knit that. I'm like, me too. And then Vicki over at My Creative Corner 3 joined in. And then a bunch of all the people who listen to these podcasts have joined in. It is a simple stock and net um, 
wrap so it's kind of mindless knitting so you can really knock back some tv shows or podcasts while you're working on it i have to be careful because um, i knit continental and there is i will be honest with you the little something about how i hold my wrist when i purl where it can get sore and if i spend a lot of hours knitting i feel it the next day in my neck and i'm sure it's because i have terrible ergonomics um so i have to kind of be careful with that but it is um i thought it I thought I was going to be able to knit this wrap and take it to this um, trade show that I'm traveling to in October. And that is hilarious because it's like 80 inches long and I'm at like 11 inches. So that is not happening in the next <laughs> month. But, um, you know, who knows? Even if I have this wrap for um, winter of 2022, you know, that is totally fine. It takes me a year. It does not matter. It's just fun knitting. This, here's the sad part is I brought it on the car trip down to San Diego and back up because obviously car knitting, right? Weirdly never touched it. I don't know. Just sometimes you feel it. Sometimes you don't. So anyways, it's a great project. It's a free pattern over at Pearl Soho. So definitely uh, check that out. It, there's, um, information in the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group. Just kind of search elementary wrap. Oh, and it's also in the show notes for the last few episodes. I'll keep that link in there too, so you don't have to look too hard for that. All right, we're moving right along here. Um, the next segment here, I want to talk about uh, shows, which are, you know, great sewing or knitting shows. <laughs> um, I rediscovered call the midwife which my family likes to call call of the midwife <laughs> but it's not it's called the midwife used to love this show um it gets dark every once in a while i have to say remember one of uh, my listeners told me like don't go past season seven it gets really dark after that um and and i and she wasn't wrong i think it was around season seven might have been season six here's the deal is i decided to check the pbs app so i donate to pbs so i'm on the pbs passport which i highly recommend first of all i you know i love pbs shows masterpiece you know specifically type shows and you get early access to it to those you know shows and um so i checked in on call the midwife and was trying to figure out where i had left off and there season seven for my pbs channel season seven is not there and i do remember this thing about season season seven being dark so maybe i watched it i'm not really sure so that's a little bit of a blank spot for me but season so i started in season eight completely enjoyable um you know obviously at this point so many of the characters have changed over but there is still um a number of original characters from the very first season that are still there which is you know really fun um but i highly highly recommend that but you know what's funny about call the midwife is you know i'm sitting there on the couch and i'm knitting and i'm watching it and then and i'm just like i'm like crying there's you know it's all about babies and delivering babies and how things can go wrong and oh my gosh and you know not always it's not painful it's 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 a good it's a good cry so anyways I'm just crying and I'm kind of laughing at myself and remembering years ago when I was pregnant with my my first child my daughter I was I would be in the room I'm sitting in right now it was an office then and we had a stationary bike and a tiny little 13 inch television and I would get up in the morning um, and ride the exercise bike because, you know, I was kind of heavily pregnant and it was just, that, that was my good form of exercise. And it was like six o'clock in the morning and I would put on Little House on the Prairie, which was on. And then about 45 minutes later, my husband would come in <laughs> as he's getting up and I would be on the exercise bike just crying because every single episode of Little House on the Prairie made me cry, especially with pregnancy hormones. And so uh, Call, Call the Midwife is now my new Little House on the Prairie where I just cry and cry, but a good cry, like I said. And the other show that I discovered, which has been so fun, is on Acorn. And again, I apologize, you know, for you... <laughs> that don't spend the five dollars a month on acorn man do i love that channel and every time my my husband like wants to get some sort of we're all streaming at this point we don't really have cable or anything and it costs a lot more money to get streaming services that include sports you know so we can watch the lakers and um so we do that for periods of time i'm like okay so we're spending 40 bucks a month so you can watch a laker game you will never get me to ever cancel acorn at five bucks a month <laughs> it is like 
It is just a, it's a constant expense for us now. But I discovered a show called My Life is Murder. I love murder mysteries. It's the only dark side thing I have about myself. This show, um, the the main detective, the main the heroine of the show is Lucy Lawless, which who you may know as a Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> so she's a little older now. She looks fantastic, though. Did you know she's blonde? She's blonde, and um, she plays a, a a detective whose husband has been killed. We, I am on to the second season here, and we still have no details about that, to be honest with you. But it, it seems as though she has given up. She's retired from the police force and um, trying to just find her own way. It takes place in Australia. She's actually from New Zealand, though. And um, so this uh, detective from the police force just comes and asks for her help on really tricky cases. So, And then she's got this great investigator that she works with. Um, that is, you know, the one that can just do all the things on the computer and find all the CCTV footage and all the bank account stuff. And, um, so it's just, it's a delightful show. The, the scenery is amazing because it's Australia. So there's two seasons of that. Um, and the second one takes place actually in New Zealand, which is even fun, even more fun because I love New Zealand. I got to get there someday. So anyways, that's called My Life is Murder and it has been a totally fun show. Speaking of New Zealand, somebody just recently reached out to me, one of you listeners, and I'm sorry I don't have your name in front of me, and said that um, they loved A Place to Call Home, um, which is uh, another acorn show. They call it the Downton Abbey of uh, Australia. <laughs> Love that show so much. And asked for another recommendation of an acorn show, and I recommended 800 Words, which is not the same kind of show at all, but also delightful, Which uh, and I've talked about it in the past, but it takes place in New Zealand. Um, uh, a widowed writer and his two kids move from Australia to New Zealand to um, kind of start over after the death of his wife and I know that sounds really depressing but it's not it's a super quirky fun show as a matter of fact if you kind of liked um back in the day northern exposure so it is what northern exposure is to uh, Alaska 800 words is to um, New Zealand so anyway so a couple other recommendations there moving on to books I've also been doing quite a bit of reading Um, The first book I want to talk about is called Slow, Simple Living for a Frantic World by Brooke McAlary, I guess you say that. She is uh, Australian and she has a um, podcast also, and I think it's just called The the Slow Podcast that she does with her husband. Um, And, you know, every once in a while, I love to revisit my simple living and slow living (laughs) Um, roots and and books and get a little bit re-inspired and that's what this was there's no great revelations but just a reminder of um, the benefits of just of slowing down you know she's one of those people that was working a corporate job and was you know racing through her life and not spending enough time with her kids and that kind of thing and frankly that was never my deal but um I still got a lot out of it. It's been actually a few weeks since I finished it, so I feel like I don't really have a lot of details other than it's just a reminder of of the reason we slow down and how it in some ways, you know, it starts with decluttering and and, and people have different um, motivations for slowing down. So it's just to, you know, um, not be so stressed out and harried. Maybe it's to spend more time with your family, more time outside, connected with nature, growing a garden, to be a little bit more eco-friendly and be a better steward of the earth, or maybe a little bit of all of that, which is kind of what I'm, I'm kind of a little bit of all of that. And um, it was just a really, it was fast and just kind of an inspirational read. And now that um, I am in fact an empty nester, my life has in fact, slow down, um, whether I want to or not. And what it really reminded me of is, okay, you know, I've got more time. It's it's clear that I've got more time. And I can spend that, um, you know, on social media and frittering it away, or I can figure out that things that I want to do with that time, whether it's get a little bit more invested in the garden, um, research some more, um, you know, eco-friendly 
cleaning systems, you know, finally tackle some projects um, that, you know, we've been putting off. That's kind of a big one for me. I, there are some things that I want to do in our house. I would really like in the next like five years, I have like a five year plan to hit all the maintenance things in this house, whether it's um, like our master bathroom is the original master bathroom, well over 30 years old. It is the only room in this house we have not in some way improved since we moved in 25 years ago. And I, and it's because, you know, not that nobody really sees it, right? Just me and my husband. And there was always, you know, there's always been better things to spend the money on. Well, it, <laughs> It's time has come, but I've just been mentally saying, I'm going to do, when Ben goes to college, I'm going to tackle that, uh, you know, and that's been my whole thing is like when Ben goes to college, then, then it's time to, you know, repaint the, the whole interior of the house. It's time to repaint the exterior of the house. It's time to finally buy that new air conditioner, you know, so I've got um, all these projects coming up and I want to be organized about it and mindful about it and um, know that I'm spending my time, you know, well and moving forward on the projects that I want to get done. And that is not to say that there still will not be a lot of resting and relaxing and having a glass of wine on the patio because <laughs> there will be a lot of that too. But um, I guess what I'm trying to say is they want to be intentional about how I spend my time. And I think at the beginning of the pandemic, I did a lot of hiding from all the feelings by watching a lot of Acorn TV, to be honest with you. And some of it was sewing and some of it was not, but that was like my coping mechanism. And I just wanna make sure that, that, uh, that this time doesn't slip through my fingers, if that makes sense. So that's the book, Slow. You might wanna check out our podcast too. Um, the other book I finally got a hold of was Turn a Blind Eye by Jeffrey Archer, my beloved Jeffrey Archer. And it is the third book in the William Warwick series, um, which is, um, I've explained it a gazillion times, but let's just call it, uh, uh, it's a detective um, series that was fictionalized in another book and now he's writing the book. So it's been super fun. Jeffrey Archer books are always cliffhangers. So this was definitely a continuation of the second one, um, which uh, which was a fun. I, I usually get my books through the, uh, the Libby app from the library. So it took me a long time to finally get this one. So I was super glad to get it and finally get that one checked off. And that's true also of the two Kristen Hanna books that I'm into. Okay, so Kristen Hanna wrote um, the Nightingale, which I loved. And I feel like I have a little bit of a, a complicated relationship with Kristen Hanna. The next book I read from her was The Great Alone, which is a whole kind of survival story uh, about Alaska. And it took me a long time to get into that book. And as a matter of fact, I only successfully got into that book when I started listening to it as an audiobook. And, and then I loved it. So sometimes the, I'm a little slow to warm up to Kristen Hanna books. Um, so I decided when I went on vacation, I, I kind of went on a tear of looking up books of hers. And so I'm reading right now, it's called The Winter Garden. And <laughs> do you do this? So I, I, I got it. It's a Libby book. I'm reading it on my Kindle, which is my pre preferred way. And I I was kind of limping through it again, not not super into it. And then I realized that I've got seven days to finish this book and three other people are waiting, so I cannot renew it. And so I decided to start putting in some effort on it. And now I'm super into it <laughs> and I'm loving the story. Um, I'm 85% done, so I'm going to make it, people. I'm going to make it. Um, but this is a story. It's, it's It's kind of a strange story about a family... And um, it's really mostly from the perspective of a woman who in many ways is in my position. She, she's younger than me, but she's got two kids in college. So she's an empty nester. She's a workaholic. Not that I am. So, so there's where, our, let me just say, there's where our similarities end. She, um, a, she runs the family business. She takes care of everybody. She's just, you know, you, you just want to tell her to chill out. And um, her, her father dies her beloved father who started this family business of an, of an apple orchard. And she is left with her mother who is Russian and has been completely cold to her and her younger sister, who's a photojournalist at this point. She's the mother's been completely cold to her 
their entire life. She clearly loves the father, but like hardly looks the the girls in the eye. They don't really know nothing about her. Um, and at some point they both like just give up trying to ever have a relationship with her. And, and their father is the focus of everything. Well, when the father dies, things kind of fall apart. And one thing that the mother has always done is tell these fairy tales. And, um, and it was, that was like the only time she was ever seemed sort of like a mother to them. And um, so when the father dies, he says, have her fin- make sure that your mother finishes the fairy tale. And, um, and so this becomes sort of the quest. And, um, you know, I don't want to, you know, tell you too much, but there, there's a lot of history there. There's a lot of explanations about why the mother is the way she is. And it's kind of a, a story of redemption. And, um, it's, it's kind of, it's been, it's been a fun ride, let me tell you. So I'm enjoying that. And just today, the, and the audio book for The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, which is her newest book, if I'm not mistaken, just popped into my Libby app. Um, and I have been waiting, I don't know, six plus months for that book. So I'm super excited. I'll, I'll, you know, finish up the, the winter garden and then, um, have a good listening book for some knitting and sewing ahead of me. So on a bit of a Kristen Hanna tear right now. Okay. Let's uh, move to the, I don't know what to call this section anymore. It's been more self-care than the homemaking lately. And, and that's going to continue today because I want to talk about this journal that I got called the Silk and Sonder Journal. Now, my friend Vicki over at My Creative Corner 3, we kind of text on a regular basis, and she has been using this Silk and Sonder um self-care journal I want to call it for a few months now and she's always talking about it and how much she loves it so I decided to check it out myself um I got I have the September one now which came half halfway through the month but that was my own fault um and it's kind of good because I feel like this is my practice journal the thing is is you can buy these journals monthly but the better deal is to buy them quarterly or yearly so you get a brand new journal every month which I think is kind of cool because um I don't know, sometimes I lose momentum with with journals and lots of things, frankly. But when you get a fresh one every month and you can just go, okay, so I didn't fill that one out as much as I thought. So let's start over. It's like a new, it's a fresh start every month and they're beautiful. Um, They have beautiful artwork on them and each one has a theme. So September, 2021 is joy. And let me just tell you about it a little bit because it's it's kind of different. it come when well, your first one comes with all kinds of um, you know little paperwork to explain how to use it. They have a very active online community. As a matter of fact, they have their own app. And where I really found my footing is they have a section of the app where people post their pages and show you how they're using it. And that's what really I was like, oh, I could do that, or or you know, yeah, because people use it different ways. And it just it was very inspirational. And I really dug in once I saw how other people were using certain pages. Um, so they've got lots of instructions uh, about how to use it. And you probably will not use all the sections of it, but that's totally fine. So we've got just the month um, calendar laid out. And so I just kind of, you know, laid filled it in with some things, you know, about when, um, my, when Chloe and Jonah, my two older kids, they, they came home for Ben's birthday, the, the week before college and the day we took Ben to college and the stuff we did on his birthday. Um, next weekend, actually, as our celebration of empty nester life, my husband and I are going to Catalina Island for a few days. So I've got just kind of the highlights of the month on there. Um, they have a page Uh, that says here, August Reflections. So there's a space for wins and hiccups, your favorite moment, the hard moments, and what do you want to stop, start, and continue? And I I think those are really good things to stop and reflect on. And these will be fun journals to pull out later on and kind of look them over. And then they have a page for September, intentions for, for different parts of your life, your spiritual spiritual health, personal life, physical health, key relationships, money management, professional goals, and just, you know, put a few bullet points in there. Um, there's a mood tracker page where people um, use, you know, like colored pens or pencils to track their mood. Honestly, that's not a page that spoke to me. Totally okay. I'm leaving that one blank. I've got um, another one for the September habit tracker. 
Um, and that's been fun. I've been tracking, taking my vitamin, flossing my teeth. I've been doing a teeth whitening thing. You know, um, I'm going to add um, food tracking, things like that. So that's my, my habit tracker, which has been fun to fill in. There's a sleep tracker. I'm not really worrying about that page. There's a joy log, which is just like a gratitude journal. Um, and there's just for, you know, they have a line for one. So you basically one gratitude thing per day. And, and that's t- like, I think that's plenty. And what's cool about this is I've been trying to pull it out in the morning and, or if not then in the evening and get into it every day. Um, and I think that's the key to is to pull it out every day. And there's stuff for you to do on a daily basis or also just when you have a little more time. Like this page is called journaling prompts um, and the theme is joy. So there's list five things that bring joy. Um, And then there's just four journaling prompts all about happiness and joy. Um, There's this cute, it's called a joy gumball machine. So they have you like, I did get some colored pencils out for this and I, they said like, write down some things that um, bring you joy. So I have spending time out, spending time outside, gardening, knitting, sewing, going on walks with my husband and family time. And I, I applied a little color to each of those. And then you just, every time you do one of those, you fill in a little gumball on this thing. So just, you know, so you can see how much time you are doing things that bring you joy. There's a place for sketching. I'm never going to do that. There's actually a, a sheet pan dinner for apple cider chicken. (laughs) So there's a recipe. There's a cut, like an adult coloring page. So there's a lot to this thing. I am not even through half the pages yet. Um, And there's a page for my favorites. Um, My favorite day of the week, my favorite book, my favorite snack, my favorite time of day. Just, you know, just things to get you thinking about things. One thing that it came with was a, uh, like this, it was called a feelings wheel. And it gave you, like, if you're journaling and you want to say, I don't know, I'm I'm sad or whatever. It gives you like 10 different words for sad or for happy or for content. Like, so you can use more expressive words in your journaling to describe how you're feeling. And I love that. Um, there's pages that are blank for notes and they are, um, Graph paper. I love to write on graph paper. I don't know about you. And speaking of graph paper or speaking of paper, the paper of the journal is super nice. I was very surprised by that. There's a poem, there's an expense tracker. Okay. And so now we get into, so, so that's all, you know, might, you might think that's a little woo woo. That's the whole, I don't know, in a way sort of self care reflective nature of this journal. Then they have, um, weekly pages and on, so you have your weekly to do's this week. I want to feel these are my three major goals. Here are the habits I want to track. There's a place for meal planning to your health, your health plan, you know, just stuff like that. Um, so there's that for each week and then they have a breakdown for each day. And this is where I got the inspiration, um, from the app is, so it's a, it's a two page spread for the week. So there are, um, there's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on the left hand page, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and in a shorter version on the right hand side. And you can circle the weather and they have something called one thing. And it can be the one thing you want to get done, the one thing you want to feel, the one thing you want to remember. It can be whatever you want it to be. And then there's just a column of of graph paper that's basically people were just using that as a journal. And it's not very big. If you've ever seen like the five sentence journal or, or something like that. And that's what I started doing is I just started talking about what happened that day you know, had a fun weekend with all three kids. We made a special dinner. This is what it was. Um, we made brunch at home. We went to the museum. Just like, so you can just look back um, on, you know, what happened. So I, because family was here, my kids were here, I talked a lot about what we did. I think in the future, I'll talk a little bit more how I'm um, feeling. But it's it's a, a column that's probably an inch and a half wide and I don't know, seven inches long. So it's, it's, it's a small space. So it's not page upon page, <laughs> overwhelming areas to journal. Now, if you want more journaling space, there are blank pages here. So you could continue if you wanted to. So that's the weekly page, uh, pages or the, you said the weekly and then the daily pages. And, um, yeah, I don't know, just this time in my life, as things are changing, I feel like I do want to spend some time and be reflective and make good choices and and kind of remember it and process these feelings I'm having about um, 
changing, you know, the, the time of the season of life that I'm in. So anyway, so that is the Silk and Sonder journal. And they actually gave me a coupon code, which is she 15. I'll put it in the show notes and you get, well, it's 15. So it's 15% off either a, if you just want, want to try it for one month or I would suggest a quarter. Um, I started with a quarter. I wanted to, you know, to get some momentum going here. But so it's she, S-H-E for Simple Handmade Every Day. Isn't that cool that that's the acronym? She15 for um, for that journal. All right, and before I move on to the Q&A, um, I have to do the nail polish segment <laughs> of the podcast. I never knew this would be a, a regular segment. But um, if you're new around here, I've become completely obsessed with Olive and June nail polish because I completely believe in the system. And um, I I can tell that a number of you have um, used my link and clicked over. So thank you for that. And because of that, they sent me uh, the the brand new collaboration. So they do these, um, you know, they just had the fall collection, but they do these collaborations with female entrepreneurs, which I think is super cool. So the one they just did is with, and it's going on right now, is called Cupcakes and Cashmere. Emily Schumann, it was not honestly um, a company I was aware of, but they have gorgeous stuff. Um, so just you can click on over there. But I guess the, the whole vibe of Cupcakes and Cashmere is all like reds and pinks. And so the the color scheme, there's six new colors and they're all very LA based and I love them all. Um, I had a picture in my stories recently called, oh now I've, it's called like fig tree or something like that. And it's like a purpley mauve and it's really very pretty. Um, so I can't wait to, to try all of those. Um, so um, if you're interested in it, click over to the show notes. Um, I got, I have a, I have a code, uh, simple 20 and you can get 20% off a full Manny system or a petty system. Speaking of which, because some of you have bought some nail polish through my code, I was able to use my credits and I splurged a little bit on the petty system. I've got the Manny system. As a matter of fact, at this point, I've got a couple Manny systems so that when my daughter was here over the weekend, I was able to put together a custom system <laughs> from all my um, stash now. I was able to put together a full Manny system and gift that to her and sat with her, showed her how to use it, how you... Um, how you use the clippers to do 90% of your shaping and how you dip it in the nail polish remover right before you paint. And, and, um, we watched a show together while she's waiting her like, you know, five to 10 minutes between coats. And I saw her yesterday and I'm like, let me see your nails. And they still looked really good. And it was over a week later. So there you go. And she, I let her pick the colors and she picked, um, five out of the six colors that were in the fall launch, which I thought was funny. So she took on my new system and she may have taken all six, but I would not part with the, the color called world lit, which is a mauve color, but she's, you know, 23. So she's younger. So she likes, um, some of the like study hall is kind of like a, they call it an almond milk color. And, um, I think it's called social studies is kind of a blue, you know, so she picked some colors that honestly at my age are not totally my jam, but were so perfect for her. So that was, that was really fun. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, click on over to the show notes and save yourself 20% on the Olive and June stuff. And I cannot wait to try the whole petty system. All right, let's move on to the Q and a, and we'll see how many we get through. I might save some for next podcast. So Meg Hannah asked what my stash is like. Um, how much do I have? What size cuts do I usually buy for specific projects or choose from what I have? Um, does my stash get lopsided with certain colors and how do I deal with scraps? That is a lot of, it's a lot of questions and I'm happy to answer that. Okay. So my stash is mostly fat quarters and that's just because of how I have bought things over the years. And to be perfectly honest with you, I don't feel like I use my stash very well. Uh, at the beginning of COVID, I got ruthless about it. I, probably twice in the last few years, I've gotten ruthless about my fabric and gotten st- rid of stuff that is no longer my taste or what I inherited or whatever and donated that all to uh, Quilt Guild. So what I have, I like, um, I'm not, 
usually a scrap quilter. Um, so I, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at grabbing from my stash, except for for small projects. So I want to get better about this. I want to use what I have. So I'm using that um, the class that I'm taking from uh, Judy Gauthier, the scrap class that's on um, Creative Spark. And my goal is to make some of those quilts and use my stash because it's just mostly, I mean, I've got some bigger cuts, but um, mostly it's fast quarters and use that like they're scraps. Now I do have scraps and I'm not good at that either. <laughs> and I've donated those. So what I do is I save them for a while. Then I realize you're never going to use these. I've tried different things of cutting them, tried the, the Bonnie Hunter system. I've tried stuff. I'm not really that good at it. And I'll tell you why. Um, a lot of the quilts that I have done over the last, I'm going to say five years have been for fabric lines. So somebody often will like send me, a designer will send me a fabric line and I will do a quilt from that, which can look quite scrappy if you're trying to use the, the full fabric line in a way. Um, and, and so that's really my issue is that I usually start with a line and um, that's not always the best way to do it. But I mean, I actually enjoy making quilts that way. And so, but I would like to uh, extend, you know, my, my uh, skills there and use what I have because I actually really do like the fabric in my stash. So that's number one, um, that's size cuts. Um, do I usually buy for specific projects? Like, so when I just did this Cabin Valley quilt, I just bought for that project. So I, I at this point in my life, I don't just go into fabric shops and buy, you know, random fabric at this point because I have good stuff that I want to use. So if I want to make a, a specific quilt, um, then sometimes I will start with a, a full line. And I do really do love doing quilts that way. Um, my stash is a little bit lopsided. So here's the deal is that I just went and looked at it. I hardly have any purple. <laughs> I have maybe no purple and I have very little orange. Um, these are not my favorite colors. Um, I don't generally like yellow, but I really, I'm coming around to mustardy yellow, um, or kind of a buttery yellow. So the, you know, but not like a pastel yellow. I'm, I'm not really a yellow person. So that's where it's a little weak. And that has come, that has been a problem when trying to find colors to contrast with because my favorite color is blue. I gravitate towards blue. For the last um, hand piece quilt along I did, I really tried to push myself out of my comfort zone. And so that has a kind of a, a berry, a kind of a cranberry yellow. I mean, I'm sorry, a cranberry red, not quite burgundy, a little more purple than burgundy and a mustardy yellow and gray. So th that's like, that was a, an unusual, um, color palette for me in EQ8. I had designed up the same quilt in various shades of blue and I really loved it, but I had done an all blue quilt <laughs> for the second hand piece quilt along. I'm like, you can't do another one. So I just said, okay, what are, what's like, what's a palette that is totally not me. And you know what? I ended up really loving it. So, so there you go. Um, so it definitely gets lopsided and how do I deal with scraps? <sighs> you know, I don't, I donate them honestly, and I would like to do better. So in this, um, the, the Judy Gauthier system, she actually has, um, different, three different sizes that she has you cut your scraps and basically you can make like all her quilts from those. And, um, and so I think I, I might try that now. I've also done a few Bonnie Hunter quilts, which have had, so I, I've done some scrap quilts, um, I did a Bonnie Hunter pattern years ago where I just, um, oh my gosh, I need to find a picture of that. I think I called it scrap happy. And I, you, I did it as a leader and ender project where you just took two random fabrics and you just, you know, they were like, maybe they were, they started out as two and a half. So maybe it finished at two inches. And so leader and ender just, you know, two random colors. And then they just got to be these bigger blocks, totally random colors, but then set, in, in kind of an Irish chainy way with lots of white. Um, and I ended up loving it. I gave it to my brother and his wife. Um, and so I've been, I've thought about that. Like that's what you should do with your scraps. Just sew them together randomly um, so that you can do some quilts like that. But the, the scrap quilts that I really like are um, usually more curated color wise. So you need to really keep your, your scraps sorted. Um, so I aspire to be better at that and the sort of uh, use what you have uh, way of thinking. 
So, but if I'm not going to use it, I pretty freely donate it. All right. So the next one is Lori Lucas says, how many stitches to the inches you're sewing? And it's funny. I just went downstairs to find some sewing to, because I had no idea. So for hand piecing, they're hard to, because I use very neutral thread, it was hard to count, but it's about 11 or 12 stitches per inch for the piecing. Um, but that just gets, it gets easier for that to get smaller the more you do it. And I've done a ton of it. Um, so don't worry about how big your stitches are if you're just starting hand piecing. Um, it just, it just gets easier. It just does. Now hand quilting is another matter. So I pulled out and I don't try to be really tiny with hand quilting and maybe I will someday. So I'm a little bit more of what I'm going to call a big stitch quilter. Not on purpose. It's just the way, again, it's just the way it pans out for me. So for that, it's like six to seven um, stitches per inch. So like nothing to brag about there, but I like the way it looks. So, so there you go. Lori Lucas also asked um, if I have any videos on stitching together like a whole row and I don't, but I do have a blog post that I will reference um, in the, in the show notes. But basically I find doing the sashing really easy because I like to, to um, sew with what I call the more complicated side with seam allowances and things like that on the top. So I can really see where that is. And with sashing, you know, there's, it's just, it's a plain piece of fabric, right? So you just pin that on the back. I don't even mark a seam allowance because I'm going to follow this, the side that's on the front and, um, and just be able to stitch on that and be able to, um, sew right through those seam allowances. And so it's, I think of it is the, the easiest sewing because there's really no marking involved, but the, the sashing blog post, when we did our very first hand piece quilt along, I kind of explained that a little bit, but that might be a video for the future. So thanks for that suggestion. Okay, the next one is from Jen, and I don't know how to say this. I'm so terrible with names. I want to say Gawel. Um, she said, what are your favorite fabric colors? How do you decide what to buy? And you already have a pattern in mind, or you just buy it, you like it, and any favorite brands. So I'm a blue girl. I love blue, um, all the different shades. <laughs> and um, I like pinks and reds and gray. So so that's kind of, you know, my color palette and um i as i kind of mentioned before i don't buy a lot of fabric just because i think it's really pretty i, I usually have a, a pattern in mind or a project in mind for it and i'm kind of i'm a moda girl i love moda fabric i love moda designers um, they've got great uh, moda bella solids are great um, but my last uh, project was Riley Blake, uh, and that also my friend Minky Kim designs for Riley Blake. So those are kind of my, my two favorites. I used to use a lot of Kona solids, but I do think that they fray a little more. So I moved over to um, the Motabella solids. Hey, okay, lots of questions about hand work. Um, so Rhonda Workman asks, what threads and needles do I like to use for hand piecing and hand quilting? So for hand piecing, I'm an Aurifil girl. Aurifil is my brand. All my thread is Aurifil. Um, and for re regular piecing, uh, for machine, I use just the normal um, 50 weight thread. And that is perfectly good for hand piecing as well. And very easy to find. Over time, I have fallen in love with Aurifil 80 weight thread, which is very thin and just melts into the fabric, but still very strong. And that is my favorite hand piecing thread. And it comes on a smaller wooden spool and um, you can buy it on Amazon. It's hard to find like in a quilt shop, to be honest with you, but you can buy it on Amazon and I love it. For hand quilting, I also, I mean, Orifil 50 weight thread is just like, you know, it is good for everything. So I've definitely hand quilted with that, but I like to go with Orifil 40 weight thread which is a little bit thicker than 50 weight thread. So it makes a little bit more of a statement. I know some people like to quilt with a 28 and 12 weight, which is really thick. But to be honest with you, I often don't want my quilting <laughs> to be so obvious. So 40 weight is, is my favorite for that. And favorite needles um, for hand piecing. My favorite needle is Gina Kimball of Foxwood Cottage. And I again uh, buy these on Amazon. I buy her straw needles. 
um, size 11. They're long and they're thin and they're sharp and they are my favorite for hand piecing. Um, short needles, some it, needles are very personal. So sometimes uh, people like short needles, some people like long needles. And I also, for, for hand quilting, I use betweens, size 10 or 11, and they're short needles. And if you use a long needle, they're just going to break <laughs> is this or bend so even I really bend the betweens too and those um I, I've got I've used many different brands so I don't necessarily have a favorite there because you can kind of go through a lot of them so I've used John James um is one that I like and also you know just like your clover is they have really good needles as well the next one is from Melanie Hayes who says um who asks have I've have you ever journeyed into making landscape quilts? And the honest answer to that is no, I haven't. But when I first became a quilter, I went to this quilt show in Long Beach and I spent hours upon hours in the art quilt section, which had a whole landscape quilt um, exhibit and they are amazing. Truth be told, I, I can't draw and I'm not particularly artistic in that way. And so I probably, I'm not sure I will ever really do the landscape quilting, but man, do I ever appreciate them. Jamie Blake says that she enjoys hand sewing too. And she, as she's getting older, having trouble holding onto the small needles um, that she loves. And do I have any suggestions? And I'm not sure that I do other than, um, I do think for, if you also hand piece, I think you can also get used to some thin, longer needles. So you might want to try straw needles, but for actual quilting, you need those short needles um, because of how much they bend. So um, I'm sorry about that. That's got to be heartbreaking, but um, maybe ex explore some longer needles like Sashiko um, hand sewing. If you know um, that, which is a Japanese style, they use very long needles. So you might be able to, from a, from a hand piecing or hand sewing perspective, try some, some longer needles. And finally, Sarah Goer says, um, what are your thoughts on improv quilting? And my thoughts on improv quilting, Sarah, is that you are my guru and I love your improv quilting. It is something that I aspire to do more of. It does not come naturally to me. And I, um, I've talked a lot about it. I've read lots of books about it. And I just basically need to spend more time playing in the, in the sewing room. And um, now that I have, uh, you know, no kids at home, I think I'm going to have some time to do that. Again, I think that part of my problem with improv quilting is that I am not drawn to chaos. <laughs> I have a very limited, I love limited color palettes. My house is a very limited color palette. And I think that a lot of improv quilting seems a little too chaotic. And so I think I need to learn to manage the color palette. Um, and then you can go a little bit crazier on the piecing side of it, if that makes sense. And I know that makes sense to you, Sarah, because um, I've seen the way you you work. Um, you should follow Sarah Goer on, on uh, Instagram if you don't already. She's a great designer. And she will um, select a color palette and then do all kinds of really interesting interesting things with it over time. So I do want to continue to explore that and get more comfortable with color theory and color choices and kind of um, do some things that are out of my comfort zone and um, yeah, and just do a lot more playing. So I think that's it um, on the questions. Let me just scroll through this Facebook group thing one more. Yep, I think that's it. So before we um, head out here, I would like to thank you. We got a couple new reviews. A. Perry 61 and Laura Sin Indy. So thank you so much for leaving such kind comments. I really appreciate it. And it really matters when people leave um, comments, not only for my own ego, but to help other people find the um, find the podcast. And I know a lot of you are new um, since I was interviewed on the Quilting Life podcast with Sherry and Chelsea. So welcome. We are so glad to have you. And if you haven't popped over to the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group, um, do that and join over there and feel free to share what you are sewing, making, baking, reading, watching, anything. Just, um, you know, we're just sharing life over there. So thanks um, to everyone for joining me. You can find me online at my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day, on Instagram at Kristen Esser, and 
over on the Simple Handmade Everyday private Facebook group. So pop on over there so that we can keep the conversation going. Have a great week.